In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about different measures of variability or spread. We're going to go through and show some of the formulas on how to calculate these, although we'd like to focus on the concepts and not the calculations. A quick reminder to subscribe and click on the bell to receive notifications when we upload new videos. Statistics is all about variability. Estimating how variable observations are. Something we're going to build up to is trying to get an idea of how far or how close is an estimate to the true or population value. So this is something we're building up to. For now, we just want to start talking about measures of variability, and we'll get there later on. For this discussion, we'll use this simple example here of having the weights in kilograms of eight individuals, so 50, 58, all the way up to 104. And I've also drawn those in here um, along a number line so we can try and visualize some of these measures of spread or variability. So let's get to discussing our first one. The first and most simplest one is the range. So the range is just the maximum or largest observation minus the minimum or the smallest. So in this simple example, it's the 104 minus 50, which comes out to be 54 kilograms. So the range gives us an idea of the full span of the data. What's the distance between the largest and the smallest? When reporting the range, it's also good to report the maximum and minimum value along with that. And it's worth noting the range is useful as a descriptive measure, but it's not really very useful often in um, analytic techniques. So the next measure of spread or variability gets called the interquartile range. And while that's a technical sounding word, we'll break it down into talking about exactly what it is. What this one is, is the third quartile minus the first quartile. And if you recall in previous videos, we talked about quartiles, right? The third quartile is the value that has three quarters or 75% of observations below it. So in this example here, we can work it out to be roughly 89. The first quartile, 64. And again, the first quartile has one quarter or 25% of observations below it. Right? So 25% of the observations are below 64. So that works out to be 25. A few notes on the interquartile range. First is that it's giving us the range of the middle 50% of the ordered data. Okay, in other words, you can think of it as being a trimmed range. We cut off the bottom quarter, we cut off the top quarter, and look at what's the range of the 50% of data sitting in the middle. A note on this is that it is not sensitive to outliers or extreme values. Again, we can see if this observation of 50 was 20, the IQR or interquartile range would still be the same. And again, um, I want to remind you, when talking about um, quartiles, percentiles, quantiles, we talk about there's slightly different ways to estimate these. So let's not get too caught up on the exact calculation of Q1 and Q3, but focus on what is the interquartile range and what is it trying to estimate. And here it's also worth mentioning that if we're using the IQR as our measure of spread or variability, we should pair that with the median as our measure of center. So the next measure of variability that we're going to talk about is the sample variance. With notation, we're going to write that as little s squared. So it's worth noting that we have a separate video that goes into detail explaining the sample variance as well as sample standard deviation and building up those concepts in much more detail than we're going to do here. So here we're going to introduce the concept um, show the formula, and that separate video will break down um, the parts of it a lot more detailed than we'll do here. The idea of the sample variance or sample standard deviation, which we're going to get to in a moment, is that we want to get some number to help us estimate, on average, how far are individuals' weights getting from that sample mean of 77.5 kilograms. So again, the mean of these was 77.5. Some people went below, some people went far above. And we want to get some estimate that tells us, on average, how far are individuals' weights moving from that mean. So for now, let's just write down the formula, build that up, and we'll start to talk about the concept of it. To do so, we want to think about how far is that first individual's weight of 50 kilograms from the sample mean of 77 and a half. And what we're going to do is square that, and we'll get into the details of why that is in a separate video. Then we can add to that, how far is the second observation from that sample mean of 77.5, all the way up to the last. So we'll do this for each one. How far is each individual from that sample mean squared 
And then if we average all of these, you can see this formula here is giving us the average of the squared distances or deviations. On average, how far is an individual getting from the mean squared, or the average squared deviation? So let's write that down here. The sample variance is giving us the average squared deviation. Now one thing to note in the formula is that we actually subtract one from this. And in that separate video, we'll expand on why we're subtracting one and where that comes from. If we were to work this out, it would come out to 317.7 kilograms squared. Right, so again, this is on average, an individual's weight is moving 317.7 kilograms squared from that sample mean of 77.5. And of course, this doesn't have that much of a meaningful interpretation yet, but when we get to the sample standard deviation, we'll make it a little bit more meaningful. Now, let's just simplify this and present it as a statistical formula. Here we're looking at how far is x1, or the first observation, from the sample mean squared, all the way up to how far is xn, the last observation, from the sample mean squared, divided by n minus 1. Or even a bit more notation, we're going to sum from i going from 1 up to n, xi minus x bar squared divided by n minus 1. Okay, and again, just a reminder, we don't want to get too caught up in the formula. We should never be calculating this by hand, but we're showing that so we can get a conceptual understanding of what is the variance trying to calculate. Some other things to mention about the variance. The units here are in kilograms squared. We care in general, they're the units of our variable x squared. It's sensitive to outliers, okay, or extreme values. Right again, if one of these values, say the 50, were to become 20, that distance is going to become much further, right? The average squared distance is going to grow much larger. And here we're talking about estimating it for a sample. If we're looking at for a population, the population variance, we write using sigma squared. Okay, we've talked about this in earlier videos, the use of Greek letters to represent population or true theoretical values, and Latin letters to represent um, statistics or sample estimates from a sample of data. Now let's get into talking about the sample standard deviation. Often just abbreviated SD, we write with a lowercase s. And in terms of formulas, if we want to write this in notation, it's the square root of the variance. Here the square root of s squared. If we take the square root of s squared, we get s, the sample standard deviation. And in notation, it's the square root of this here, right? The square root of the variance. So the square root of the sum of i going from 1 up to n, xi minus x bar squared divided by n minus 1. And if you work that out, it's going to come out to be 17.8 kilograms. Now I just want to do a quick reminder. We don't want to get caught up in focusing on the formula. I cannot remember the last time that I calculated a standard deviation by hand. Right, we get a set of data, we can use software to calculate that for us, but this helps us get an understanding of what is the standard deviation and what's it trying to estimate. So let me just write that here. It's not quite this mathematically, but it's pretty close to it. So I'm just going to say it's approximately the average deviation. Here's the weight of eight, indivi eight individuals, sample mean of 77 and a half kilograms, some are moving far below, some are moving above. On average, okay, an individual's weight moves about 17.8 kilograms from that sample mean weight of 77.5. Okay, let's draw that in here so we can visualize. The first observation was 50, and that was below the sample mean of 77.5. It was actually 27.5 kilograms below. The weight of 58 kilograms, again, that was below, and it was 19 and a half kilograms below the mean. This weight of 70 kilograms is seven and a half below. The 75 is two and a half below. The weight of 85 kilograms is seven and a half kilograms above. The weight of 88 is 10 and a half above the mean. The weight of 90 kilograms is 12 and a half above. And that weight of 104 kilograms is 26 and a half above. So these here are showing all the different 
um, deviations, or how far is an individual from the mean. The sample standard deviation, what it's trying to capture is what is the average difference or average deviation. Okay, so conceptually you can think of it as being these average deviations here. It's not quite that, it's actually we calculate the square of the deviations, average of those, and then square root that. But conceptually, it's okay for you to think of the standard deviation as being the average deviation. On average, how far does an individual get from the mean? Some important notes about the sample standard deviation. It's also sensitive to outliers, right? So again, if there's an extremely large value that creates a large error or large deviation and that increases the standard deviation. And finally, if we're talking about the population standard deviation, we write that using sigma. Okay, so again, we have a separate video building these up a bit more and explaining them in a little bit more detail, um, getting into why do we subtract one from the bottom there. The final reminder is you're probably never gonna calculate these by hand, so don't get distracted by the formula, but focus on the concept of what these are trying to estimate and use the formula to help your understanding there. Stick around guys, cause we got lots more. Hope you guys liked the video. Statistics is almost as beautiful as a unicorn.